Greetings, programs. My name is Wretch, and I'd like to welcome you to the Blackwell Legacy. This is the first of a series of games created by Dave Gilbert from Rat Wadget Eye Games. And if you follow the channel for any amount of time, you know that I am a huge fan of that company. I first game I ever played from them was Techno Babylon, the first year I started on YouTube, and they really opened my eyes to this galaxy of independently made point-and-click adventure games, and I thought the genre had died like back during Grim Fandango. So, um, really have enjoyed their games. I don't think I've missed one since Techno Babylon, but every single time I start a new series, I have people message me going, you've got to play the Blackwell games, they're so good. And I have some downtime here, so I figure any time that there's like a lull on the channel where there's no new games that I'm interested in, we'll go ahead and just start knocking out some of the Blackwell games. I don't know a whole lot about the story other than it revolves around this woman and her ghostly companion, and it's kind of got a Dresden Files vibe to it. So uh, I'm looking forward to this. Let's go ahead and get started. Would you like to activate in-game instructions? Yes, please. In addition to on-screen instructions, you can view the instructions by clicking the help button on the options screen. Very handy. Day one. So, I guess this is it. Years of watching and waiting and hoping, and it comes down to this. Do I love you? Do I miss you? I don't know for sure, I hardly know you, but you're the closest thing to family I've got, and I suppose that's something. Goodbye, Auntie. Wherever you are. Oh, right off the bat, okay. Dave, what a legend. I like the backbeat. It reminds me of like mid 90s Ninja Turtles movie. Thank you for that backbeat, Peter. So we're getting like a full title sequence. All right. What a morning. At least I'm home now. And morning was spelt with a U. Um, interacting with objects. Interact with objects or characters. Move the mouse cursor over them and left click. There's a strange kid standing in front of Rose's door. Try interacting with him to see what he wants. All right, so we got windows. Is it a left click, right click situation? There are bars over the windows. I'm not getting in that way. The windows look into the lobby of the building. Okay, it is a left click to interact, right click to look at. I've, I've, I've never seen this kid before in my life. Okay. Hi there. Um, hi? So who are you visiting today? Make an inquiry? Like, who are you, dude? What are you talking about? Seriously, who are you here to see? Can't let you in unless you tell me. Um, I live here? No, you don't. I know everybody in the building. I don't know you. Who the hell are you? Jim Birdo. All right, Jim. Where's the regular doorman? Jeez, where have you been? He's on strike. He's what? Strike. All the building servicemen in the city are doing it. Union rules or something. I stepped in to help because I know everybody. How come nobody told me? Notices were posted all over the building. I put them up myself. If you lived here, you'd have seen them. Who pays attention to things like that? Well, that's not my problem. Hmm. Really? I live here. Nice try. I know everyone in this building, and I don't know you. Sorry. I've lived here for five years. Then how come I've never seen you before? I have no idea. Doesn't matter. If you lived here, I'd know you. That's all there is to it. So is he running some kind of con, or is Rosa that much of a hermit that uh, he wouldn't see her? How long is the strike going to last? I don't know. Could be a couple hours or a couple days, depending on whether they reach a settlement or not. I don't know the details. 
Listen, I really live here. Fourth floor, number 4E. 4E. Hmm. Isn't that apartment empty? No, I live there, and I want to go there. Thank you very much. Oh, hmm. Maybe you're telling the truth. He sees reason, thank God. Do you have any ID? A driver's license or something? Yes, I have a driver's license. It's upstairs. In my desk drawer. Crap. <laughs> Come on, this is New York. Who actually drives? True, but I still can't let you in unless you prove you live here. <laughs> Threatened violence right off the bat. Do we have proof? I have my apartment key. Will that do? Sorry, no. That could be any key. Well, let's go upstairs and see if it works. And leave the door unattended? Can't do it. Sorry. Hmm. Okay, I have no ID, and you don't know me. What can I do to prove that I live here? Hmm. Well, can anyone in the building vouch for you? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't really know anybody here. How long have you lived here again? Be quiet. Not all of us are social butterflies. Okay, whatever. Hey, what about Nishanti Sharma? She could vouch for you. Who is this Nis... uh, Nish... Nishanti. Nishanti Sharma. She lives in 4F. You know, right next door to 4E. You really don't get out much, do you? Your point? Nothing, but I'm sure she could vouch for you. Great, call her up. She's not here. Of course she isn't. So I gotta wait here all day for her. You might have to. Although, she usually goes to Washington Square Park in the mornings. You could look for her there. Well, we got our first quest. I'll be back. See you around. Activating the inventory bar. Rosa is carrying something. Let's see what it is. To activate the inventory bar, move your mouse cursor to the top of the screen. Do you have a stun gun? Welcome to the inventory bar. Here you can access the objects. Uh, Ro Rosangela is carrying. In addition to accessing the game options. Save, load, quit, etc. Look at objects. Right click. Mm-hmm. Dr. Donald Quentin, Bellevue Medical Hospital, New York, New York. Miss Blackwell, my name is Dr. Donald Quentin, and I was your aunt's primary care physician here at Bellevue Hospital. I have seen to your aunt's needs since she arrived here 25 years ago. Please accept my heartfelt condolences for your loss. Feel free to visit my office at any time. I'm sure we have much to discuss. Sincerely, Donald Quentin, MD. October 12, 2006. Well, nothing really else here, so let's exit. I guess we're heading to the park. Rose's apartment, we've got Bellevue Psychiatric Hospital. Let's take care of the house situation first, if possible. Washington Square. It's been a while since I've been here. Still looks the same, I guess. Although the dog park is empty, I wonder why. It's been a while. Sign. Can't look through the garbage. What kind of point-and-click game is this? Please note, Dog Walking Park is closed until further notice. Hmm. The, the dog park is empty. Sometimes I double right-click, just my finger twitches, so I apologize uh, in advance for that. Getting a stress headache. I need to get home. Oh, hey, doggy. He's wearing one of those extendable leashes. I don't think so. No petting the pupper. That's her. I oh. recognize her from my building. Nishanti Sharma, was it? This is going to be awkward. Ooh, very talented. That's Nishanti Sharma, my next door neighbor, apparently. She's playing some sort of flute. Did you never hear her practice? Uh, excuse? I can't do it. I can't just barge up to her. Not in front of all those people. They're all staring. The dog's leash is tied to the trash can. I'm not untying the dog's leash. Nishanti would kill me. Oh, I thought we were just assuming that that is Ashanti's dog. Maybe we need to grab something at Bellevue? I don't think so. K. 
Can't click on the leash. All right. So Rosa has like severe anxiety, it seems. To Bellevue. Not a nice segue, but. The sign says I'm not allowed back there. Looks like an internal phone for paging doctors or patients, I guess. Some kind of motivational poster. Hang in there. It says that this floor is undergoing renovations. That explains a lot. Maybe the flickering lights, maybe. It's the security guard for the hospital. Some small keys. One mm. of them is labeled FB. I assume that means fuse box. I'm here to see Dr. Quentin. Uh-huh. Is he expecting you? I've got this letter right here. Okay. Looks legit. Go right in. His name's on the door. You can't miss it. Thanks. Well, that was easy. Come in. Dr. Quentin? Yes? I'm Rosangela Blackwell. Oh, hello. Come in, come in. Rosangela, I've never heard that before. You got my letter, I trust. Yes, I did. Good, good. My condolences on the loss of your mother. Thanks, but she was my aunt, not my mother. Ah, quite right, quite right. So you wanted to talk to me about something? Yes, yes I did. But before we go into that, how are you holding up? Um, I assume that she would be cautious. I'm fine. Why? Oh, no reason. Just asking questions. Goes with the job. Right. You received the ashes? Yes. I scattered them this morning. I imagine you must miss her. To be honest, I'm not sure what to feel. It's not like I knew her, or even remember her from before. She's like a stranger. So why did you make it a point of visiting her all those years? She was the only family I had. I guess I felt an obligation like I had to. And now that you don't have to? What do you want me to say? Auntie's dead, life goes on. So you'll just keep living, is that it? Yes. Hope keep so. writing your little book reviews in the paper, right? You know about those? It's hardly a secret. A number of the staff have read them, yes. I didn't think a West Village paper would interest anyone up here. I have to be honest, Miss Blackwell. The staff read them because they were more interested in you. Why? That's... Really creepy, Dr. Quentin. Their intentions were purely benign, I assure you. It was your aunt they were primarily interested in. They wanted to know more about her family, and you proved to be, hmm, shall we say, less than eager to comply? That's their problem. Indeed. It was your choice to make. Your aunt was an interesting case, and now that she's gone, I was hoping you'd be more forthcoming with me. Just an informal chat. We can discuss her condition. And yours too, of course. Um, let's focus on why we're here. You never could find out what was wrong with her, huh? No, we didn't. But she still remains a fascinating case. Fascinating? I don't understand. Forgive me. I speak from a purely professional perspective. I didn't know your aunt personally. Neither did I, but fascinating? It might come as a surprise to you, but yes. But she was practically catatonic. All she did was lie there for 20 years. She'd sometimes twitch or mumble something incoherent, but I wouldn't call that fascinating. Well, as you know, she wasn't exactly catatonic. We kept her sedated. Right, she had outbursts. Yes, and we had to sedate her heavily to keep her calm, especially in preparation for your visits. What are you trying to say? Miss Blackwell, we are not a nursing home. We're not content to merely keep a patient comfortable. We are, after all, in the healing profession. We were trying to heal your aunt, and to do that, we had to speak to her. Wait, you spoke to auntie? We tried to. Did she answer back? After a fashion, yes. 
If Auntie spoke, why wasn't I told? Miss Blackwell, do you remember what brought your aunt here in the first place? Her screaming? Her hitting herself? I was only five years old at the time, but I kind of remember. In order to prevent her from doing harm to herself or to others, we were forced to sedate her. When we limited her medication, she simply reverted to her former state. Her natural state, I'm sorry to add. What did Auntie say? Nothing that made any sense. But one thing was clear. She was in great pain. Pain? What kind of pain? It's difficult to say, but it was immense. How immense? When we reduced her medication, the transformation was dramatic. Her eyes flew open, she thrashed, her screams. Well, we had to gag her eventually. My God. I know. Did she still feel it when she was sedated? We don't know. There's no way of knowing. 25 years. I know. Poor auntie. I'm wondering if this is hereditary. Wait, what do you mean by my condition? Hereditary dementia is my specialty, Miss Black. Oh, no! In my opinion, there is significant cause for concern. Sorry, did you say hereditary? Yes, two generations. Your aunt and your grandmother before her. My grandmother? Yes, Patricia, I think her name was, right? I never knew my grandmother. Auntie Lauren was it. There was nobody else. She couldn't exactly provide me with the family history. Oh, I see. I had no idea. Well, maybe you should have. Did anyone else come in to visit her besides me? No, you are correct. I should have read the family history more carefully. I do apologize. I just assumed... Well, never mind. It doesn't change the fact that you should be concerned as well. Go on. Patricia Blackwell suffered her mental collapse at the age of 55. Lauren Blackwell underwent hers at the age of 40. What are you saying? That the same thing is going to happen to me? No, I'm saying that there is significant cause for concern. Maybe some preventative maintenance? So, I had a grandmother. Apparently so. How do you know about her? It was in your aunt's case history when she was brought to us. Patricia Blackwell's symptoms were the same word for word. Patricia's case was severe, and she was young, but it was chalked up to being an ordinary case of dementia. Until... Until it struck her daughter. Until 20 years later, when it struck her daughter, yes. It seems impossible. Perhaps it's genetic, but we've detected no abnormality. I hate the fact that it's called an ordinary case of dementia. You couldn't find any other link between the two cases? None, aside from the family connection. And uh, a name. A name? What name? The documentation we had on your grandmother is minimal, but there was one interesting item noted. During her more lucid moments, she uttered the name Joey. Your aunt, too, would cry out that name on occasion. Joey? Yes. Who's Joey? We've been wondering the same thing for 25 years. So what should I do? Right now, nothing. This type of thing is unprecedented. There is no procedure to go through, no medication I can give you. I just want you to be aware is all. And come talk to me if, well, there's any concern. Is there anything else you need to tell me before I go? Your aunt had some personal effects in storage. As the next of kin, you're the beneficiary. It's just a folder, some documents and so on. Okay. It's being sent to your address via messenger. Oh, well, thanks for that. It's no problem at all. Goodbye, Miss Blackwell. My schedule is fairly open now, so feel free to drop in any time. I'm always happy to discuss my favorite patient. Sure. As long as there's no puzzle box in there, we should be okay. Ish. Um... Let's see if the guard has any insight here. Did you have contact with Lauren Blackwell while she was here? Nope. Doesn't ring a bell. She was in uh, temporary care? No, she was in long term. That's a whole different floor. This is the floor for temp patients. I see. So what exactly happens here on the temporary ward? It's just that. Temporary. Most insurance plans only cover a two-week stay, so this floor is designed for a high turnover rate. That's why the doctor's offices are usually down here. They need to be on hand when new patients arrive. Makes sense. 
What's with the lights? Hey, old buildings, you know? Always got problems. If the plumbing ain't broken, the lights are on the blink. It's giving me a headache, let me tell you. Thanks. Uh-huh. Appreciate the info there, Biff. But now we need to get into, you know, the house. You need a key to open it. Hmm. I don't have anyone to call. Now, I know going for the key is not going to work here. I don't think I need any of these keys. Yet. What about the radio? Can we turn that off? I don't think so. Just a small transistor radio. All right. Hello again. Grout. All right. I'll be back. See you around. I was wondering maybe the package would be outside, but. The dog park is empty. There's no reason to go in there. Please note, dog. Hmm. All right, back to the fountain. Hey there, pupper. I don't think so. He's wearing one of the. And we don't have the letter anymore. Can we check the trash can? I'm not untying the dog's leash. Nishanti would kill me. Yeah. All right, here I go. Um, um, uh, no. Okay, that didn't go so well. I just need to work myself up to it. Yeah, you can do it. Come okay, on. Okay, you can do this. Right. Um, crap. Calm down. Need to calm down. Relax. Pet the adorable pupper and try again. Right. This is it. Hi. Um, can I? Damn it. This is not working. I can't do this. I just can't. No. I can't do this. I just can't. I'll just have to wait until she's finished. Or, I don't know. I can't do this with all those people staring at me. Hmm. I'm not untying the... I don't think so. The dog's leash is tied to the trash can. He's wearing one of those extendable leashes. Can you follow me over here? No, we can't go past that. I don't think so. Oh, here we go. Oh, for heaven's sake. Don't worry, Moti. I'm coming. That's clever. Had that happen. They're all better. I can't take you anywhere, can I? With my puppers. Oh, it's you. The lady next door. Yeah. Hi. Rhonda, isn't it? No. Rosangela. Well, Rosangela. I hope my friend here hasn't been giving you any trouble. That's a cute dog you've got. Isn't he just? Normally he behaves, but he seems to have taken a shine to you. Oh, great. Anyway, I don't think we've formally met. I'm Nishanti. Rosangela. So you said. Oh, right. Um, yes? I have a strange favor to ask. Go ahead and ask. What are neighbors for? You know that building servicemen strike? Yes. Jim Birdo is covering, isn't he? Yeah, that's the problem, see? He doesn't recognize me. Oh? Oh. So you need me to vouch for you? Yeah, I know this is pretty stupid. Don't worry about it. Moti is getting a little cranky anyway. Let's get you home. Thanks. Not the first time we've had to get past a Birdo guarding the door in a video game. Mm. Are you alright? I'm fine, I just need to get home. Alright, let's keep walking. 
Oh, the headaches and now finding out about the hereditary condition. Oh, man. Hello, Jim. Hey, Miss Sharma. Jim, this is Rose Angela. She lives here. He does? Okay. Sorry about earlier. Had to be sure. Well, now you're sure. And you must be so proud of yourself. Well... Never mind. Just get out of my way. Well, here we are. Yes, finally. That stupid kid. Well, perhaps. But try not to be so hard on him. We're all neighbors after all. Yeah, I guess. Looks like somebody's hungry. I'd best get this spoiled puppy fed. Feel free to drop in any time you want. Oh. Really? Yes, really. I know we New Yorkers don't usually talk to our neighbors, but who cares? The city can be a lonely place, especially when you live alone. I've got Moti. Who do you have? Oh, I have three great roommates. Oh? Yes, um, their names are me, myself, and I. Um, it's a joke. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> Very that awkward fine. smile. I'm sure you're fine. Although your episode in the park tells me otherwise. And your eyes. Well, let's just say the offer stands. Sure. You go home now. We'll see each other soon, Rose Angela, I'm sure. Hey. Yes? Um, you can call me Rosa, if you like. Rose Angela is kind of a mouthful, you know. All right, Rosa. You have a good day now. What a strange lady. Okay. Got another door. Fire extinguisher. Home. Oh. Thank God. That is an old TV. I've never been so happy to see a 500 square foot room in my life. Telephone. Oh, old school telephone too. We got clippings. We got our envelope. Um, DVD player at least, so there's hope. I've had him as long as I can remember. He's in horrible shape, but I don't have the heart to throw him away. What's the his name? That's Griff, the P.I. Bear. Ah. I've had him as long as I can remember. He's in horrible Nice to meet you, Griff. We got a lava lamp. Um, Chuck? This is the only living plant I own. I bought it two years ago. It's still living, despite my total lack of care. I suppose I should trim this plant. Maybe one day. I love the piano with the, like, the beat. It's really nice. I like it. Out of sight, out of mind. We're gonna check everything except for the envelope here. There's nothing in these cabinets I want right now. No chainsaw in the kitchen? Just a standard stove oven combo. Cook. Why bother when every Chinese restaurant in the area delivers? It's fake, but kind of pretty. I don't need to touch it. I know these plants are fake. And if you're wondering if I can if I can turn the music down, guys, unfortunately, it does not give me that option. So. This TV was here when I moved in. Watching All in the Family on this thing. I don't need to bother. I don't get reception anyway. I must have watched all these a dozen times. I'm not up for watching a movie. Besides, I've seen all of them a dozen times. As you said. Oh, notebook? It's my notebook. I don't need my notebook now. Hmm. Just some old book review clippings. They're fine where they are. Just a trash can filled with crumpled up novel ideas. Now we get to look I through the- I need to take the trash out. Oh. It's not even full. Never mind. It's just a telephone. I have nobody to call. My computer. It's a bit old, but it lets me access the internet and do my writing. Cool. Well, we got the apartment tour, guys. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and call it an episode, and when we get back, we will see what is in the envelope. 
Hope y'all are enjoying it. Rose is a very interesting character. We'll see where it goes. But if you guys like the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.